Once again, I'm Joe Stevens. And I am LTT Moose. And we are the Equestrian Choir with Everfree Network, and we have three fantastic guests with us today at mm-hmm. Las Pegasus Unicon. And I'll just go ahead and see we got a big group. I'll just pass the microphone around. If you want to introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Gary Chalk. I'm a, I'm a virgin, so be, be gentle with me. Um, I've we got ne- massage oils, we got scented candles, it's all going to oh, be okay. very nice. Oh, so we got the oil and we got the candles, so I'll be happy. <laughs> and, and ponies are notoriously gentle, I've heard. So anyway, my name's Gary Chalk, and I, I play the part of Fido, one of the diamond dogs. So there you go. All right. Uh, my name is Michael Dangerfield, and I played uh, Brayburn. Uh, and it's great to be here. This is uh, fantastic. All right. My name is Mark Oliver, and I play an arrogant French griffin <laughs> called Gustave Le Grand. <laughs> All right. Well, fantastic. All right. I guess the first kind of questions that we would have, you know, especially going with, you know, uh, uh, you know, the, the voice acting in general. Um, when you guys are, are, are approached with roles, you know, such as this, I mean, these are basically characters that you have to create sight unseen. Uh, you don't get to see any of the, you know, uh, uh, pr- you know, uh, character design at that point. Sometimes Am I correct? you do. Sometimes you do get a character okay. design. Yeah. Did you guys get Not any all. of that when you were working on this particular show? No. no. Okay. No, so you're, you're 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 basically. How does one go about creating a voice for a bodiless character? <laughs> well, there's a there's a. Do you, do, you, do you have Home Depot down here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I go to the paint department at Home Depot, and there's a guy there, a French guy, and I, whenever I want to bone up on French well, accents, know who it is, you know the guy, paint department, <laughs> and you think, you think, you go, <laughs> okay, want to go, and oh. you want to say to that guy, okay, it's fine, it's fine, it's, you can knock it off now. But he really, really sounds, <laughs> sounds like that. And uh, he's... He's very really French. He's very French. <laughs> He's so exaggerated and over the top. And and if I if I really had to do sort of super duper extra French homework, then I like watching the French chef Michel Jacob on YouTube. Uh, and again, you know, you look for the sort of little ticks and personality traits, which which are going to play in a slightly more mm, exaggerated fashion. Right, right, more of a, uh, almost a parody. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, you want it to be immediately identified as French. <laughs> oh yes, you, you know, and and, and you, you know that you, you that means you have to sort of lapse a little bit into like sacre bleu territory <laughs> and, and find that's okay. Uh, oh, so back I'm, into your Maurice Seville. You know? I I, tr- I I've tried not to perpetuate hateful or hurtful or unkind stereotypes of the French people. Mm-hmm. Uh, but <laughs> depending on uh, depending uh, yeah. how funny they are, we we'll, uh, could let that go. It's okay; they're doing that just fine on their own. Yeah. Um, you uh, for well, for my character uh, for Brayburn, I just got like a uh, I can't even remember what the description was, but it was an apple, wasn't it? He was he was a well, member of the he's apple got family. Got an apple on yeah. his ass is what he has. <laughs> but. Uh, but no, I just I actually went to university in Kentucky, so I, w- I was there for four years, and I was around that that just that kind of just you know, and I just got very comfortable at just sort of doing that thing. And then I just had to pitch it up to just get up to Appaloosa, just kind of <laughs> get up into there and just kind of find that kind of sixteen year old sort of sound, and mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, it was easy. I mean, he was a fun character to play, and it was yeah. So definitely borrow from your surroundings. Exactly. I think is, yes. is one way, and then I think just for me personally, you just learn what you're good at, what what your hits are, what you, what archetypes mm-hmm. you feel comfortable doing, based on your voice tone and, and your personality. Right. You know, so I you, have a, you have a, you have a set yeah. I just think that there's with, yeah. there's certain things that I just are in my wheelhouse, and then I kind of go after those, and then I try to deliver something good. And I definitely yeah. lean towards comedy because I just I've done it for a lot of years, and and. Uh, but you know, I've done some of the action stuff like Transformers too, and right, so right. it's just kind of finding out what's right for you, and then hopefully you can put a good spin on it. Is there any particular accent that you, you know, like, like you said, you have your your standard, you know, wheelhouse accents? Is there any particular one that you love doing Scottish? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> just no, whatever. I mean, there's a lot of like, there's a million different English accents you can do, uh, you know. Mm-hmm. But you sort of based on each individual city has its own individual. Well, it's accent funny, Mark there. is, yeah. a, he, you know, he said to me one day, he's like, you know, you should always. You know, you should always be continuing to learn a new accent. You know, actors need to keep doing that. And I just, just that, that guy, Paul Meyer, right? Paul or Phil. Meyer. I mean, some things are, who, it's always, it's always evolving. I went to school in England. I went to one of these sort of schools which don't really exist anymore. Um, and, <laughs> and we were. School 
A boys' school? I went to a boys' <laughs> what they call a public school, but it's a private school. So you had uh, access to all these people, and now I look back on those experiences and I realize that they're really like endangered species. Like voices are endangered species because of the internet and because of the way that worldwide television works. The unique um, characteristics or idiosyncrasies of uh, regional dialects are fast. Regional block dialects. Regional block <laughs> dialects. Mm-hmm. Depending on which street you grew up on, yeah. They're, dis- <laughs> they're disappearing, and, and uh, I would have to say that to a man and to a woman, my colleagues have a, a deep and abiding love and passion for studying these um, inflections and regional idiosyncrasies. And I think that's you know, what makes a, the character engaging for the audience. And people go, well, I've sort of heard somebody like that before, but I can't really put my finger on it. And uh, you know, we never think in terms of doing a celebrity voice or anything like that. I'd say that uh, the, the great voice actors who I've been very privileged to work with and to learn from, uh, they're, uh, it's always a real person's voice that they're doing. It's, and they mm-hmm. color them in and shade them in in uh, fascinating ways. It's a pleasure to watch, and I'm always learning from my contemporaries. More an anthropological study than anything else this uh, this career. Absolutely. <laughs> Me? I... Uh, I I guess I'd, I I would look at the uh, look at the character description to get sort of the the uh, the uh, emotional aspect of it because you can get certain things from written that you don't get from the body, mm-hmm. but when you see when you see an actual picture of the character, you you look at it and you go, well, what would this character laugh like? And if you can find the laugh, usually you can find the character, because they even though it's a cartoon, you still have to obey physical laws. Mm-hmm. And uh, if uh, if it's a long, thin, reedy voice, it's not going to come out like this <laughs> unless it's funny, <laughs> which it's not. But you unless know, your character is a twelve-year-old girl, then yes, it's yeah, hilarious. If it's That's a twelve-year-old girl, <laughs> then it's then it's somewhat different. But uh, you know, most of the time, like like for for Fido, I just I looked I looked at him and I took d- took a variation of another character I used to do called uh, called uh, Hack from Reboot. And he has uh, a very rough yes. idea. Yo, push the button. I don't want to push the button. Every <laughs> time I push the button, something bad happens. And I thought, well, because it's a dog. So what does a dog sound like? What would a dog sound like? A big, angry, pit bull kind of dog sound like. And so I said this. Oh, we're going to have kidnapped the little pony. We love the little pony. Come with us. You know. And uh, it seemed to work just fine. And uh, that's that's what uh, what I would do with all my characters. And uh, if someone is asking for a particular accent, I mean, I do a lot of accents anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've played on TV, played uh, Germans and Russians and Brits. Excellent yes, my <laughs> Russian. Oh yeah, I had to speak Gary Russian. Does, Gary does excellent. Excellent Russians. We you were there that, uh, on one of those, weren't you? You were there for that. For I was one there. Of those. I, I was. I was there. I guess it was. Was it Stargate? Stargate. Yeah. Stargate. Right. Playing a French ambassador. Yes, uh, and very good. And he was a very good Frenchman. But um, <laughs> the, the thing about it is, is that there are places like there on the on the uh, on the internet there are there are accent banks. I've I've seen a few of those. Yes, and so. you can get accents from anywhere in the world, yeah. and uh, find the rhythms because it's all about music, right? The the it's mm-hmm. all about rhythm and tone, rhythm and tone, rhythm and tone. Exactly. Yep. And uh, idea is that one. The, that's the Paul Meyer site that yeah. you did, right? Oh, that's the one. Yeah. Give it all away, Mike. <laughs> yeah. Tell us all your trade secrets. Yes. <laughs> Hand it up on a plate, for God's sake. <laughs> well, there's a, you well, idea, here? idea for, for aspiring voice actors out there is a very good resource. So people get sort of scared of it. I did international dialects of English archives, and that's so right. and that's one. Yeah, that's, that's a great a, one. That's, that's a very idea. good. That's yeah. a that's a yeah. very very good one. If yeah. you had to sort of go, oh my God, I have to sound like I'm from Liverpool tomorrow by four o'clock. And so you will go and you sort through their database until you come upon examples of either females, 
female speakers. Like or a sixty-year-old woman. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, but but you, do you want a dockside Liverpudlian, or do you want a up, so, up the hill so yeah, Liverpudlian, or you want a rich one or a poor someone one? someone who's already moved to they Liverpool have for about fourteen accents. years? Like in my neighborhood, we had. Uh, you could tell where somebody came from in the neighborhood by how they spoke. Like mm-hmm. where I came from was was Southampton in England. Okay. And they they have a very s- sort of style. Well, me and my friend Mike went down the Shirley High Street, you know, to see <laughs> my mates there. And there was my father, right? But it's a different one when you get closer to the docks, and it's even more different when you get start moving towards Salisbury. So they they, they have a different kind of uh, uh, they have different kind of slang. They have uh, different patterns of what they say, and uh, different it's cans, it's basically. it's yeah. quite <laughs> funny. And the and the, and as Mark was saying earlier, the 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 accents, the English accent, anyway, it doesn't matter where it is in the United States or Australia or Kiwis or wherever it is, mm-hmm. they're all becoming homogenized yes. because of the exposure to all these other all these other accents, and people are starting to sound uh, more American or more Canadian. Like it, it's hard to tell a Brit from Croydon and a Brit from rugby. <laughs> you know, it used to be really different, but now they're right. sort of. Pity. It, it, it's a great pity. I think that this sort of. Did you say? Did you say homo- homogeneity? Homogenizations. Yeah. Homogenizations. <laughs> I'm sure some of the grammar scholars out there will tell us. Yeah. Hey, homogeneous. It's a word that means everything's going the same. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, like milk. <laughs> I mean, the United States. I mean, to, to, we're, you know, this is so funny because I think when I went to school in England and people would do very, very, very bad American accents. <laughs> and uh, and it's so incredibly rich. And I mean, I, I, I love just to be able to step out onto the streets of Las Vegas and hear this <laughs> vast smorgasbord of voices. And uh, will I try and place people within five or ten miles? No, I can't do that. I've got, I've got a wooden ear for that stuff. But... <laughs> You know, you know. I mean, Texan voices. You know, to, to I mean, how many how many voices are there in Texas? At least three oh I can God. think of. Dallas, Panhandle yeah, voice. Panhandle. Yeah. Yeah. Dallas, yeah. Houston, yeah. Dallas, Houston, Panhandle, the Gulf. Mm-hmm. There's four distinct accents there right off, and then there's all kinds of variations in between. Austin, you know, something Austin. Who knows, right? Exactly. If you go more Tejano, you know, off yeah. toward the west, yeah. And they talk a little faster and a little flatter as you get up towards Oklahoma, and <laughs> it's uh, it's quite something. I could send out. I could send a general question out to to everybody who is a t- tremendously enthusiastic about My Little Pony, and that is, what kind of voices? Do you respond to, and what's what's mm-hmm. what makes a what makes it dramatic or engaging? Oh, Do you exactly like right. those sort yes, of overlooked yeah. voices? I mean, we have access to all sorts of things, and I think, gosh, no one's ever asked us to be French Canadian, not yeah. that often, no. or there are few sort of few sort of things, and you work on them, and you think, one day, one day, one day, or you think, I'm going to crack the code. Of I, Welsh I, think, accent. I think it'd be great to hear a Cajun pony or you're something the, like that. Wouldn't that be fun? You're a brave man for Cajun taking on Welsh. Yeah. Oh, that'd be funny. Yeah. You know, with, with Tebow, no, oh. yeah. Yeah, we're going yeah. down there in a moment, yeah. We could call him Gumbo. He could be Cajun Gumbo. <laughs> Cajun so, pony named Gumbo. Gumbo. I, I would. See, that's a great idea. <laughs> yeah. I don't, why don't they have that? So, for <laughs> all of you who have, you know, your. So for all of you who have those, you know, fanfics out there where the South African pony meets the Israeli pony, <laughs> we're good to go. Yes, we have now, you know, some some people who are willing no to do limitation, that, right? No limitation. Yeah. No. I, I can do a South African accent. No problem at all. <laughs> you know, the thing it is, it's right, man. When you go down to Joburg, they've got horses down there. <laughs> I'm telling you. And they're funny. They can do tricks. <laughs> <laughs> so... Let's put this into context. It's been several years since you've done these actual episodes, yeah. you know, because there's a long lead time between the acting out, the voice acting, and the actual show airs. So we'll put you in the context here. Your agent or, or whoever made the phone call says, I got this job for you. Yeah. It's on a show called My Little Pony. What was your reaction to that? What? <laughs> <laughs> Flat what? <laughs> What's it called? And when do we record? <laughs> <laughs> I I, uh, I I kinda liked it because I knew about My Little Pony before it was a uh, before when it first became a cartoon series because a friend of mine was in the original 
uh, episodes. Uh, I don't know if you remember. I think it was uh, Janice Jode. Janice Je- Jode played uh, uh, some characters on there and did a lot of singing on that show. Um, I thought it was uh, it was wonderful. It was I I had the same reaction when uh, when they asked me to play a big cloud in uh, Care Bears, you know, because you, you, when you think of Care Bears, you're going, well, what do you think we're going to do? You know? and I thought, how the hell am I going to fit in Care Bears? <laughs> but it it worked out well, and this little character, myself, and this little character named Tweezel, which uh, we make all the flowers grow. It was wonderful. But, uh, you know, you, you, you say, well, this is going to be a bit of a challenge. And uh, when I got there and we did it, it was, it was quite fun. And uh, so every, every job that comes, it's, a, it's sort of a new experience and a new, um, a new uh, adventure. It's, it's another way to go because a lot of times, like I play big characters, and uh, not very often no. do I get to play little. <laughs> really? It's absolutely it's true. Yeah. It's, it's the... absolutely true, oh. except I think there was one character I played named Geppel in uh, New Adventures of He-Man. And he had a voice way up here, and he thought it like that. <laughs> oh, it was nuts, and I would come out so sore at the end of the day. <laughs> you think it's easy? You don't know my pain. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, and every once in a while, you know, you get something that really, uh, really puts you on the spot. Hmm. What was your guys's? Yeah, what was your Well, I, uh, something that's quite common, uh, at least over the last five years at least, is, uh, is a lot of us have home studios and we send in the auditions. So, you know, my agent said, okay, hey, it's uh, My Little Pony audition for Brayburn. And you kind of, you know, you work on it at home. You don't actually go to the studio to do the audition uh so you can actually spend a little more time on it you can do your thing just make sure it sounds the way you want it to and and then you send it in and uh so that's what i did and then yeah i got the call it's like yeah you're you're gonna play brayburn on on my little pony i certainly had heard of the show for sure like i just but of course you know once uh got involved a little bit further with all this i had no idea that uh the fandom is is this big with with mlp it's it's just it's amazing so uh yeah, it's it's absolutely it's very cool. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, cause I, yeah, the show was when did it, when it was it in the eighties or original, is that with the original? 80s. Yeah. 80s, yeah, yeah. So it's uh, it's definitely. I, I'm wondering if the fans from the eighties are the are the fans now. Is that well, it's what's happening? Like the Transformers. There's there's <coughs> the Gen One fans. <laughs> right. Oh, the Gen the One. Gen One. Yes, yes. Gen one is, and they're so loyal to their generation. I mean, right. It, it's killers. It's, ah, fat, fat. Right. He's Gen 3. <laughs> Gen 3. Gen 3.5 is too much. Yeah. Oh, and I used to get that all the time with the Transformers, because Transformers have gone through so many iterations uh, since 1984 or 82, I think. Right, yeah. But um, uh, I had no idea. I mean, I used to do the commercials for Transformers for the toys, for the toys. <laughs> But that was the extent of my thing. You know, the Transformers Generation 2 batteries sold separately. <laughs> and they always <laughs> forgot the batteries on Christmas morning. Gave I think the expression batteries sold separately was the expression of our childhood. Yeah, yeah. yeah. pretty much. Batteries pretty much. Yeah. New from yeah. Cap Toys. <laughs> what was that? The Super Soaker 2000. You know, all those, those, those kind of things. But I, I think the, um, oh, yeah. Microphone. Yeah. The, the, the thing was is that, that you would always get someone who would go, yeah, well, you'll never be Gen 1. I said, well, you'll never be Gen 2, so shut up. You know, you just go back and forth and back and forth. And it was so funny, there were four of us who played, who played Optimus Prime in the, uh, in the Transformers cartoons. And of the four, three were Canadian, which is odd. The original was Canadian, Peter Cullen. He was uh, from Montreal. Yeah. And myself from Vancouver and David Kay from Vancouver. And then there was that lone out, outlier, that, that guy, my, my pal, uh, what's his face, uh, 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 Neil Kaplan, who's a great guy. I just, I really like him. We've been around to a few things. But uh, as I say, it's just like, you know, they, they, they all have their own loyalties. And some people have their own herd loyalties, right? You know, there are some people who just go stay with this group, and then there's someone who will stay with this group. And you never really, you never really conceive of something like that happened. Like, 
you know, when I first got into cartoons, I just thought, oh, another job, it's just cartoons. And when they gave me the Transformers job, oh, it's just a, a Transformers job. Mm -hmm. But I had no idea, have no idea the fan that it's worldwide. Yeah. And now you get people from all over the world. And the same with My Little Pony. And even my little character who has like, you know, when you go there, I think the shortest YouTube video <laughs> ever, <laughs> the shortest YouTube video ever, it's three seconds long. <laughs> And it goes, oh, there's my little pony, and grab, and then it's over. <laughs> and I go, oh, that's terrific. <laughs> but but there are, it's it's had like I don't know, thirty thousand views, and I'm going, that's just weird, you know. But it's again, my little pony is another yeah. thing that's all over the world, yeah. and um, I think I'm, I'm, quite frankly, I'm I'm kind of honored and humbled to be a part of that worldwide phenomenon. Yeah. So there you go. And we still have much to contribute because yeah, of My Little Pony we're World. We're getting old, yes. but we're, we're like cheese. We're, we're getting better. <laughs> the fine That's wine. right. We do, we do get better. Fine wine. We do get better as we get older. <laughs> so, Mark, what was your reaction? I was going to say that I have to pinch myself uh, when I, if I get cast on these you know, very iconic shows. You, 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 I was well aware of My Little Pony, and My Little Pony has a very large mythology uh, attached to it. So, you know, and then I got cast and then I was, you know, was trying to do as much homework as I could. Uh, because I, I like that, you know. I'm, uh, f f doing cartoon voices is the only thing that I've been accepted for really creatively in my life. I mean, th there was a, a sort of a tangible check attached to the session. I mean, I've done all sorts of but all sorts of creative pursuits. So I have a lot invested in it, and I'm just very happy to be accepted by, you know, some small slice and, and of... And your character public. actually was... the Brayburn and uh, Fido were a season one character, That's and your right. character came in on season two. So had you been exposed to it all of what season one was about? Had you seen any of the show before you actually did your role? I, I, pay, attention to, I pay attention to everything, and, you know, I pay attention to shows that I will never, ever get cast on because... Uh, you know, I mean, I, I can't. St There's one particular show. It was an English show. It was done with stop motion animation or sort of marionette animation, and it was there was talk of it coming to uh, our town, but it is now going somewhere else. Which one? Uh, I don't know if I'm. Am I allowed to say? Th there is. There is a. There is a pony convention in Vancouver coming up. Yeah. There's a <laughs> All right. Pony, I'll say it. Thunderbirds uh, has gone oh, to New Zealand. Yeah. Oh, Thunderbirds. That's Thunderbirds. right. That's right. So, yeah. so you know. Love so, that show. Love that show. I love that show too. So uh, you really love getting. Uh, it's a big thrill to be yeah, accepted right. on these very iconic right. shows. I didn't like the movie though. I gotta say. <laughs> no. no. Uh, I gotta no. say. I loved, <laughs> I loved the original Thunderbirds. I used to watch it all the time when I was a kid, and Brain Boy and all the, uh, I loved you know, it as well. I loved in that. Super Marionation. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. That was, that was the hook. And uh, the old guy who played, uh, what's her face, uh, what's her name, the, the Lady woman? Lady Penelope? Huh? Lady Penelope. Lady Penelope. The guy who played her chauffeur. The old guy who played. I was so always far. trying to teach myself how to walk like that. <laughs> yeah, <sure>. but <laughs> Penelope. He sounded. He sounded exactly like. I thought it was Peter Sellers playing the voice because yeah, he sounded uh, exactly like the guy Nettie from from uh, the Goon Show. He said, oh, "Right, yeah, well, no, we're just going out there, Miss Lady uh, Penny Farthing, or whatever her name is, Penelope." Oh yeah, I'm it's it's, definitely informed it. For sure. Yeah, it sounded just like that character definitely. and. Uh, hmm. And the same with this one. The thing I like about this show, I've been watching, you know, some of the shows because I have to do my research, you know. Mm -hmm. And watching some of the shows, and I gotta and, say, and the, the cereal in the morning as you're sitting there Saturday morning. Oh yes, that's, just, that's right. That, that's yes, the cocoa yeah, puffs yeah, or yeah. the uh, the cinnamon toast. Yeah, cinnamon, uh, yeah, cinnamon toast. A man yeah. of taste. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, I, I'm I'm finding that you know, despite the, the the characters are a little bit out of my ballywick, I'm not really a big pony fan, but I really like. The writing of it, the stories are great, mm -hmm. and it's quite uh, addictive. And some of the characters are just uh, are just adorable, mm -hmm. but it's not you know something that I would go out of my way to to watch because it's uh, it's just not my thing. Then when I watched it, I'm going, wait a minute. <laughs> 
think I'm turning into a brony. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> no, wait. No, no. What's this? I put the... It was just a towel. The towel was hanging out of the back of my pants. There was nothing there. Oh, it was I just see. a towel. No. Could no, those aren't metal things yeah, on my feet. Right, that's right. I think oh. you described the, 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 re the dawning realization. The that dawning many, realization many that... The older fans of this have, have Wait a minute. That, yeah. What am I doing with this halter? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Well, you touched on something uh, earlier, talking about you, when you saw like the three-second three uh, YouTube video, the reaction that your your characters have really resonated. And I'd like, Michael, you to talk about this specifically, because Brayburn has such a huge following. Yeah, I mean, I, he's I, iconic. I, and I, What was your reaction? Maybe you, can help, maybe you guys can help me, because I don't... I don't uh... We'll do our darndest. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I mean, I, I had definitely had a lot of fun playing the character. It was a lot of fun to play, and... You know, doing that sort of Kentucky <laughs> accent thing that I'm very familiar with. Um, somebody, w I think it was Sherry that was saying, who's my convention agent, was saying that Brayburn's one of the only male ponies, or there isn't that many. Is that right? Yeah, he's. Yeah, is that yeah. I mean, not with sort of part of the role? Yes. Yeah. So I think that's maybe part of it, um, and maybe it's some of the other work that I've done too. I don't know. Maybe it's, there's some, uh, you know, some Ace Ventura fans out there, or. <laughs> Superman fans or, or whatever some of the stuff you know I've done over the years and uh, but uh, it's yeah I mean it's it's like Gary was saying you kind of you kind of just send in auditions and sometimes you just don't realize like it's for it's going to end up being this iconic show yeah. or it's going to have this huge following and you're kind of like wow I just can't believe that you know I got to do this and 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 uh, and then here you are sitting in Vegas and talking to you all <laughs> you know so uh, yeah that no, was very cool very cool yeah. And I, I know, like, and I've checked it out online, too. Like, I know there's a lot of, like, the episode, I think, that I was in on YouTube has been viewed, like, 100,000 times or whatever. Like, it's just huge views. And then there's clips and there's all there's a Facebook fan page, I think, for yeah. Brayburn, okay. which, everyone you know, wants to come back. Everyone yeah, wants to see more. Brayburn. So maybe I well, I was in the shuttle with uh, two of the head writers. So maybe I uh, I should pass along some of those uh, tidbits of information <laughs> there. <laughs> yes. So, uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, speaking of that, you know, speaking of uh, like, I guess you know, segueing into the online community aspect of it. I mean, you guys have you know long illustrious careers, you know, doing these uh, doing these characters for, for for many many years. And but of course, you know, now with the advent of you know the internet and the rise of social media, uh, the fans seem to have much more access. I, I, I would say they have you know they, they they catch a person who's said one line, <laughs> you know, right, right. you know, w welcome to Appaloosa, and right. they can identify that person, and then they can. You know, follow you, find out on your work. Has that? Have you guys been affected by that at all? You know, as far as like you know the the social media aspect of it. Well, I think just I mean be, the reason why we're here probably just because they probably investigated our work and and certainly had a chance. Maybe they didn't see the episode and they can see it online, or people have done Facebook fan pages or whatever it might be. Um, yeah, I think that's that's certainly a part of it. Oh, okay. There's a girl in South Africa who's crocheted every single character that I've voiced and <laughs> right. showed them to me. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> so and one day you're going to wear every single one on your wear. body <laughs> at the same time. Well, I was just. <laughs> I, mean, right. I, was, I, was, I was. I was. I mean, I was. I, I was delighted. She did a very fine crochet job on them. I mean. Uh, it's incredible. It's incredible, and people do. Yeah, people do reach out through social media, and they want to, they want to to, to know more. And part of the thing is that being a voice actor, you know, and, and Gary, <laughs> we've all done TV, and I, Gary has probably done the most out of us in terms of TV and film and stuff. But uh, being doing voice, you don't get contacted or like you know at least pre pre internet sort of you know when all that started. Mm -hmm. There was no sort of like, oh, I know of this person because they did this voice. I mean, voice actors were just behind the curtain, right. like the Wizard of Oz doing our thing, and I'll we'd leave the studio. Story about that in a minute. And that's, <laughs> <laughs> I was the voice of the Wizard of Oz. No, no. <laughs> no I'm just kidding. <laughs> He's right. That was me. Um, but <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't put it past you. Well, that's what I'm trying to say. But uh, it's it's just kind of cool that you know you end up being noticed or people like you know because even when i did ace ventura which at the time was a big high profile job yep. and i you know we, i did some some interviews with it and tv guide and stuff like that but it didn't it, it certainly wasn't 
there you know, were no, there were no, no it was Ventura conventions. No, there certainly <laughs> wasn't. Which maybe you know, twenty years later or fifteen years later, there might have been some something around it. Or I would have went to Comic Con or who knows, whatever, right? Stuff like that. So it, it's cool to be recognized a little bit and say, hey, we really like your work because it is artistic. What we're doing, it's very creative and it's a and we're hustling. Like you know, there's voices that we do that we really. Like Mark saying, does his research. We get in the studio and we're sweating. We're trying to do the best we can, and you know, to do a good job. So it's uh, it's nice to be recognized a little bit, right? I think also I don't think this is important for anybody who's an aspiring voice actor out there that this pursuit is a very pure one. And when I watch people lift a script off of the page and make it come alive, and uh, it's a it's a fascinating thing. And there's no. <laughs> You know, there's no hiding, but there's no hiding behind anything. It really is like, look, ma, no hands, <laughs> sort of situ situation. And I, I, I have, of course, I have tremendous respect for all of the great actors who appear on screen. Mm -hmm. But the, you know, the sound and the human voice is like a thief who, who breaks in through the uh, basement door of the imagination. And that is an amazing image. That's, that's poetic. And it, and it works, too. It yeah. Yeah. yeah, it works. Yeah. That's great. Very well said. Oh, well, there we go. Yeah, we'll write that down and use it for later. And my biography, this will be the title. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's good. Well, my, my, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I was going to say, that, yeah. so I'm, I'm shooting a, a movie over in Victoria called, um, called uh, it was about this band the big time rush from the Nickelodeon. I guess they're on Nickelodeon. And I was doing the big time movie. And one day I was I thought, I'm gonna go downtown because we were in Victoria in BC. And I said, I'm gonna go downtown. So I got in the bus and I said, hi, how you doing to the bus driver? Uh, just wanna get down to the Empress Hotel. Is this the right bus? And from the back of the bus, I hear, wait a minute. I know that voice. I know that voice. Optimus. That happened to you, really? And I went, huh? Yeah, and this is. huge black guy, who was in the Navy, in the Canadian Navy, came running up to the front of the bus, and he goes, "Are you Gary Chalk?" And I said, "Yes, I am. I knew it. I know that voice. I know that voice." <laughs> And I thought, well, I'm just going to take a ride downtown on the bus. Well, no. Now everybody goes, anymore. I thought it was you. You're that guy. <laughs> and I went, oh, God. And, but I've heard so many times in my life, it's, it's, the weird, it's a weird form of fame. It's called, you're that guy. Mm -hmm. Or, mm -hmm. I know you. Yeah. And it says, yeah. I'm on television. Nope, that's <laughs> not it. You, I know you from, you were at my sister's wedding. Or <laughs> no, I wasn't. But I've heard you're that guy so many times that that's going to be the title of my autobiography. You're, that guy. you're, that, you're guy. that guy. Almost famous, but not quite. And I get recognized by my voice about three or four times in a, in a year. You might get someone come up, I knew I knew that voice. I've heard that voice. And it's particularly funny when the customs guy, when you're going through the border, goes, you're that guy. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing fine. But, uh, yeah, as, as Mark was saying, you know, that uh, voice acting is, is, I think, the purest form of acting, no matter what. Uh, because you, the, the, your physical, emotional, intellectual, geographical intent has to be absolutely clear, right? If yeah. you're in a field, you're in a field. You're not in a closet. And because they draw around your voice, rather than you voice something they've already drawn, mm -hmm. you've got to give it that extra little bit mm -hmm. so that they have something to work with when they're, when they're doing, their, um, doing their, their animation. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think uh, because you have no physical cues or no facial cues, everything has to be done with your voice. So it's, yeah. uh, it's a real... <coughs> challenge to anybody to to grab a script and read the script for the first time and lift it off the page right away and create something living and something that you care about and that's the key I think with the with all the characters in this My Little Pony uh, show is every single character in the show the fans and all the people that watch it really care about them and even though that they know they're, they're just people voicing the things. Those little ponies are real characters. Yeah, right. 
because they live in in a real world and they that have world. the real feelings and real interactions <laughs> with other people in an unreal setting right yeah. which uh makes it quite endearing I mean, because there's nothing worse than doing a character that that someone goes meh yeah you know, we don't, you don't care don't get a reaction yeah, yeah. Right. no reaction, no. reaction you know at least you evoked it <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah it sounds like there's no transformer you you might be a brony i think that you might have already gone in there <laughs> and so well, now that we are here, we're, ex we're exposed <laughs> to yes. we're exposed to the Brony community. We've, as you said, uh, taking your Brony virginity, which is a very special moment for me. Thank you very much for that. And wh what? Are, how are you feeling? Are you feeling the love? Are you feeling the love of the community? You know, is, is it a good place to be here? So far, so good. So <laughs> far, so good. I haven't had anybody come up to me and say, "You're the bastard who tried to kidnap her." I hate you. No, it hasn't uh, happened yet. But no, because they don't. I, I'm hopeful they don't take it that far. You know, but uh, no. So far, people have been very warm, very warm. and uh, yeah, we were very hugged. open. We've been hugged. Hugged. We were hugged. We've been hugged. Everyone gets hugs. Yeah. It's a hugging community. Yeah. There's a lot tactile. of love. There's a lot of love with this whole. Thing. It's very warm. How do you how do you attach a price tag to a hug? <laughs> you don't. But the They're thing priceless. is, priceless. You know, in in the world the way it is, with all these, you know, the mass killings at Sandy uh, Sandy Hook and uh, and and the Aurora and all these places, this is a world that where that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. And I think people more than anything want that innocence. They want that camaraderie, that warmth, and that compassion that it's not out there in the real world a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just, uh, a, a, a guy I know, uh, Sean uh, Kasigan, was um, just did this video on bullying, a, po a, a poem on bullying. Have a look. It's fantastic. It's, a, it's an animated essay on, on, uh, on the effects of bullying. And uh, there's a lot of that in the world as well. There's a lot of negativity in the world. We need a positive we image, love. We need positive and message, and a lot of love and That's understanding. Right. Well, we're so happy that you were a part of something that is special to so many people. And uh, thank you so much for coming and doing this interview with us. It's been, it's been great. You guys are hilarious. We love talking. To you. Cool. Is Now that we have a chance to speak with you directly, is there anything you'd like to say before we go to the fans uh, out there, the fans of My Little Pony and the fans of Reboot and uh, Transformers right. and other ones? Thank what would you, you like to say? Thank you such great fans. Thanks for being such great fans and... and uh you know, uh, recognizing our work and and creating these uh, conventions that we can come to and connect with you. And if you can't come, maybe you can come to another one or we can connect online. But uh, it's it's very cool. I mean, we're down here in Vegas because of you. And that's pretty cool. So we dig that. So yeah. we dig you guys. Thank you for that. I concur with my esteemed colleague. <laughs> <laughs> I yield my remaining time. My yeah. thing to all you fans out there, to all, to all the ones, keep on believing. And the more of you that believe, the better the world will be. I th I, we can't we can't say it anything better than that. So I think I'm just going to say I'm Joe Stevens and I'm LTT Moose, and this is the Equestrian Car Air for Radio from Las Pegasus Unicon. Keep watching. <laughs>